A content calendar helps you get an overview of your posting across multiple platforms. This helps to plan accordingly for general content marketing or for big launches. It can also help you create content that is connected and complementary. Whether you're a solopreneur or collaborate with a small team, ClickUp is a great tool to use for managing a content calendar. Hi, I'm Valentina from Mint Planning, and in this video, I'll walk you through the basics of what to include in your content calendar, and then I'll show you two different layout ideas for organizing your calendar in ClickUp and give you some tips for making the most out of these layouts. These layouts are also available as a free download in the description. Before worrying about the tech, you should first decide what is needed in your content calendar because everyone's needs are going to be different. I like to write this out in a notebook or in a notes app so that when I go to build it out in the software, I'm crystal clear on what needs to be included. The first thing you'll need to include is a way to indicate the channel or platform. A channel or platform could be Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, your blog, Twitter, email, TikTok, Pinterest, and so on. So which of these do you use and will need to include in your content calendar? This next one is post attributes and is optional. A post attribute for Instagram might be labeling something as a reel, a story, an IGTV, Attributes are going to be the most helpful if you have a strategy in mind, like posting a certain number of reels a week, and then you can easily see on your calendar whether or not you have that amount planned. Tracking the stages of a post is also optional and usually depends on the platform. A stage would be like drafting, editing, designing, scheduled, etc. It's where a piece of content is in its development. I find that for some platforms, having a way to track the stage is too much information and not helpful at all. But for things like creating YouTube videos, stages are key in my process. Having a stage could also be essential if you're collaborating with others who only work on a piece of content when it's in a certain stage. For example, an assistant who helps you with scheduling but won't work on posts until their stage is labeled as ready to schedule. Tracking the status is arguably the most important thing you need to include. In ClickUp, I find that keeping the status simple is the best way to go. This is because ClickUp has the option of having custom statuses at the list level, the folder level, and the space level. So it's really easy to accidentally create a custom status that shows up in another list or overrides a status that you already set up. So best practice for ClickUp is to have simple status options. Simple things like to do, incomplete, complete, done, things like that. Last, you might need an assignee, which is going to be who is in charge of that post. This is pretty self-explanatory. If it's just you, you obviously won't need to worry about this. But if you have help with your content marketing, making sure you add an assignee for every post or task will ensure that you always know who's in charge of what post or process. Layout number one is the simple starter, and it's a good fit if you don't post to a lot of platforms at the moment and you want to keep it simple. You're going to have one space called marketing. The space status is that simple status you decided on to do or open and then something like done. One list called content calendar. You're going to use the space status, don't start from scratch. And then each task is your piece of content. It's gonna be the name of your content. You'll add on two label columns. The first one is going to be your channel or platform. And then the second one is going to be your post attributes. 
Then add in a drop down column. If you need to keep track of the stage of a piece of content, you can add a drop down column to put each of the stages. Now, some people use their statuses for the list as their stages. Again, whenever you start adding in other spaces and other lists, as you add more of your business planning into ClickUp, I just find it a lot simpler to keep statuses, very streamlined, simple, similar across everything as like a to do or open and a done. And then if you do need to track stages like in process or scheduled or editing that stage, I would prefer just to keep track of that in a drop down menu. To use layout number one, you're going to create a new task for each piece of content. Update the labels and stage accordingly, and then put any information like caption or notes here in the description. You can also attach any media via Google Drive or Dropbox or just upload from your computer. So that way that media is prepped and ready to go when it's ready to be scheduled. To see your content in a calendar view, make sure you have that added in the top here. And if you prefer a Kanban style of viewing your content, you can add that view here and then have each column organized by channel, post attribute, stage, day, or status. So then you can see your content in these different ways. Layout two is the strategic planner, and this is a good fit if you post to many different platforms and or you have a strategic content strategy, whether or not you're working with others on these posts. So at that top level, we're going to have our marketing space, set our space status to something simple like to do or open and then done. Then our first folder is going to be called campaigns and events. In that folder, we'll have two lists, one called holidays and events for general holidays to keep in mind or post about. And the other list is going to be called editorial planning for launch phases like pre-launch, open cart, pre-sell, etc. In our holidays and events lists, each task will be that holiday or event. And then if you need, you can add in a labels column for any attributes that you need to keep track of. And then if you absolutely need a drop down for a stage, you can add that here. And same thing with your editorial planning list. So each task added here, each item here is going to be a phase or type of content to go out at that time based on your business goals. And for this list, I use a lot of start and end dates because a lot of this planning is going to be over multiple weeks, sometimes multiple months. And then if you need attributes, my suggestion is to use the labels and for stages using the drop down. Now our second folder in this layout is going to be content calendar. Each list is for each channel or platform. And then each task is going to be the piece of content for that platform. The labels in each list will depend on what's needed for that platform. Like for Instagram labels for the attributes that I would add would be reels, story, IGTV, feed post. It just really depends on what you would like to keep track of or be able to organize information by and what's part of your strategy. And again, as needed, if you need to keep track of the stage of that content, go ahead and add a drop down menu. So how to use step one, schedule a large planning session once or twice a year to update your holidays and events list and outline your launches or themes. I personally like to be in the folder level for this planning session so that I can see my campaigns and any holidays from that list all at once. And then step two is at least once a month, schedule the larger main pieces of weekly content, ensuring that they align with your campaigns and events. I use the calendar view at the space level for this planning session. 
last once a week or however often you need it. Fill in the content for the rest of the week across your platforms that is connected to your weekly content. You'll be creating a new task for each piece of content and then updating the labels and drop down accordingly if you need them and then put in any information like captions or notes here in the description and attach any media as needed. When planning this, I typically switch between the list level and the space level, giving me the ability to see only what I need to make planning decisions. Throughout all planning sessions, you can easily switch between views like calendar and list, the same as layout one. So if you prefer a Kanban style of managing your content, you can add that view and then have each column organized by channel, post attribute, stage, day, status, whatever it is that you need. All right, here's some bonus tips to help you squeeze the most value out of your new layouts. Bonus tip number one, have a published date column and a due date column, especially if you collaborate with others. This way you can set a due date for earlier than the published date, you're not getting things done last minute, and you'll know exactly when a piece of content should be scheduled to publish. Bonus tip number two, color code each list to better view your content at the space level. Tip number three, have multiple of the same type of view in different types of planning. For example, when I'm outlining Instagram content, I have a calendar view at the space level to just see the Instagram editorial and holidays and events list. And the last bonus tip, make any view less overwhelming by customizing the information that you see. Just click the three dot menu here and toggle items on and off. Don't forget, you don't have to build these layouts from scratch. You can get a head start and download them for free. The links are in the description. If this walkthrough was helpful, make sure to like this video and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.